Okay. Well, joining us now is Tim Evans from Longleaf Trading Group, who's live from the CME in Chicago. Tim, a pleasure to have you on the program today as always. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, finishing last week decidedly bearish, that was for the oil price. Today, though, we've seen those prices receiving a bit of a lift. OPEC comments uh, signalling further production cuts uh, in crude production. Is that really what's supporting the price there and how likely do you think that is? Yeah, hi, uh, nice to be with you today, Leanne. Um, I mean, I, I think the, the price action in crude oil, you know, largely was a life raft thrown from the Saudi Arabian oil, oil minister today, you know, announcing the November crude allocations would be reduced by 560,000 barrels a day. You know, the thing to remember, though, even though they're reducing the allocation, the, the total number of exports are actually still going higher. And I think that's why we ultimately didn't see the kind of pop in the market that you would expect on that type of announcement. Um, I, I mean, I, at the end of the day, though, I think we're pretty much a good market balance. I mean, the, you know, the bulls and the bears are kind of at a standoff here right at $50. $50. I mean, you have the 200, 100, and 20-day uh, moving average is all coming in right at 50. And, you know, we seem to be oscillating around that price level. So I, I, don't, I don't expect us to diverge uh, far from that here over the next, over the next week. Yeah, and speaking of the, the next week, um, we're going to be shifting focus once again to some more data. Um, we have the EIA numbers coming out and also to yeah. OPEC for, for more on those supply and demand numbers. Yeah, I mean, those numbers are very important. And I, and I think we're going we're gonna to see some quiet market activity tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday is normally when the DOE data comes out, but because of Columbus holiday, that, that, that data is going to be released on Thursday. Uh, and that, that'll be accompanied by the EIA monthly uh, and OPEC monthly reports, you know, which are going to give us a much better, you know, signal in terms of uh, the supply and demand fundamentals that are underpinning crude oil right now. So I think once all that data is in the market, we'll get some movement off of that. We know the U.S. rig count story has also played such a large part, I suppose, in, in the moves yeah. for the oil price. And we saw that rig count dropping last week for the third time in the last four weeks. That is significant, isn't it? I mean, showing that the market potentially is still dangerously long here. Yeah, I mean, because no one, no, one, no one really understood. I mean, when, when, we, when we saw U.S. shale answer the call after the production cut agreement back in November, uh, you know, we saw the number of rigs increasing week over week over week over week. And the, and the question was ultimately going to be at what price point did that begin to discourage um, oil producers from, you know, adding new rigs, uh, you know, to, uh, to the existing rigs. Um, over the last really month and a half, close to two months, we've now started to see consistent de declines in the number of rigs. As you indicated, Friday's Baker Hughes numbers showed that we were down a couple and that makes it three out of the last four weeks. So, I mean, in my personal view, from an intermediate term standpoint, you know, I think that shows that the market, global market overall is coming to get balanced. It's just, it's just taking a long time. It's moving slow. Yeah, and as we know, I mean, the market's been in this um, tight trading range, I suppose, for those oil prices for, for some time now. Where do you actually see um, the price moving from here? What are your sort of uh, downside and, and upside target, targets? Where do you see the oil price going? Uh, I mean, I, I think without any new bullish news, I mean, I think the path of least resistance right now is still down. You know, we think November uh, crude oil futures, um, 48.57 should be, uh, provide good support. And we don't see much past 51 and a half to the upside. So, uh, you know, we expect these narrow ranges to continue. Of course, um, the US dollar, Tim, plays such an important uh, part, not just for the oil price, but, but commodities more broadly. We know that the US dollar has been rebounding from yeah. that, that recent weakness. Today, I mean, it's been trading fairly tightly as everyone's trying to assess the political situation uh, in the US, but that strong Aussie dollar clearly pressuring commodities. Where do you see, um, I should say, the, uh, the US dollar? Where do you see the greenback kind of moving from here? What's your target? Well, you know, we've, we've had obviously a nice little runoff of 90. Uh, we're 93 half roughly last time I looked today in the December dollar index. Uh, I mean, I think a push through 94 is really what, what would hurt commodities overall, and that would include gold and crude oil and really any dollar denominated asset, which is virtually all of them. Um, however, I don't believe that we're going to see a move much through that 94 handle because uh, I really think 
uh, a robust tax reform package in the United States is going to need to get passed in order for the market to have the confidence to continue to bid the dollar up, uh, and that, and that, you know, to that degree. Um, you know, my confidence in the current, you know, political situation we have in the United States, it, you know, it, it doesn't give me a lot of confidence that, you know, we're going to see legislation get through Congress, signed by the president, and, and put into law. Um, so, I, you know, I, I just don't think we're going to fundamentally see what needs to happen for that dollar to push through 94 and stay there. For the gold price to continue moving higher, how much is that dependent on where the U.S. dollar index moves? Uh, right now, it's getting to be very dependent. Um, you know, the gold, gold, gold's, it's had an interesting road this year. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. overall positive, but it's, uh, you know, the last, you know, month or so, it's been, you know, obviously a very weak market. You know, we came down and tapped that 200-day moving average on Friday, and the market found good support there, good follow-through buying, and that follow-through buying continued uh, Sunday night, Monday's uh, trading session as well. But I think a lot of that really has to do with uh, the geopolitical tensions that kind of underpin gold. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world right now that, you know, that can benefit gold and potentially benefit gold in a big way. You know, you know the tensions between U.S. and Turkey, obviously, are spilling over. Uh, you know, the ongoing North Korean situation, uh, you know, is there very helpful for gold. I mean, we had the, uh, the Trump White House over the weekend talking about the current uh, kind of quietness that we're seeing with respect to North Korea, the calm before the storm. You know, so, the, you know, obviously comments like that don't help pacify the market at all. Um, you, know, you know, we have the Catalonian protests. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot going on that, you know, from a geopolitical standpoint that I think will continue to underpin gold. Uh, you know, gold's held that 200-day moving average since July 18th. I fully expect it's going to continue to hold that 200-day moving average in the weeks ahead. Fantastic. Tim, we'll have to leave it there. We appreciate you joining us, though, as always. Thank you so much.